Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Christ, the Word, make us worthy to prepare ourselves to celebrate the feast of your miraculous birth, when you reconcile the heights and the depths. Fill our hearts with the faith of those holy ones who awaited your coming throughout all generations. May your love and your peace reign within us, that we may glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Ancient of Days, born of the Father before all ages, who by the appointed time took flesh of the Virgin Mary. By his birth he fulfilled the revelation of the Holy Spirit, spoken by the prophets. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. Glory to you, O Holy Son, you are the hope of all the nations, awaited by all generations. You are without beginning or end, yet at the appointed time you chose to be born as a child. You are the great and mighty one, yet you became man without any change to your divinity. You enrich creation, yet you have become poor, and your mother sang spiritual songs to you as she carried you in her arms. O child, O ancient of days, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the shepherds of Bethlehem and the Magi from the east came to worship you, and the angels gathered to sing to you. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace. The church throughout the world prepares for your birth with joy and with gladness. Now, O Lord, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to let the light of your holy face shine upon us as it shined in the glory upon the shepherds. Fill our hearts with perfect joy and give us an understanding of the mystery of your plan of salvation. 
With all who have prepared to welcome your feast, we praise, glorify, and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Accept our incense and give us your grace. Protect your flock that awaits your coming and prepares for your birth. Have mercy on us and upon our departed, that we may be worthy to enter into your kingdom and raise glory and thanks to you forever. Kaddishat, aloha, Kaddishat, Jesus lies in a manger, though he is the Lord of all. Angels join earth in wonder at the Son of God made man.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son, descended from David according to the flesh, but established as son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness through resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are, are you also, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I give thanks to my God, through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is heralded throughout the world. God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in proclaiming the gospel of his Son, that I remember you constantly, always asking in my prayers that somehow by God's will I may at last find my way clear to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may share with you some spiritual gift, so that you may be strengthened, that is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by one another's faith, yours and mine. Praise be, praise be to God always. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The Apostle Matthew writes, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, Abraham begot, became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob. Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah became father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon, the father of Salomon. Salomon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Yese. Yese, the father of David, the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. 
Rehoboam became the father of Abiyah. Abiyah, the father of Asaf. Asaf became the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat became the father of Yoram. Yoram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Yotham. Yotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Yekoniah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Yekoniah became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azor. Azor, the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim. Achim, the father of Eliud, and Eliud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Matan. Matan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. <clears throat> from David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Messiah, 14 generations. This is the truth, peace be with you. by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all the nations for his name. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So we come to Genealogy Sunday. And of course, we have this mysterious gospel that we'll actually talk about next year when we go through the gospels every single week. This, this is more on the epistles this year. But the emphasis of Genealogy Sunday is to remind us of the incarnate, historical, realized grace with which is the coming of the Word. We can think often of Christmas as being something about the baby being born in Bethlehem and all these things. And those things are true. But as I've mentioned to you numerous times, it's more than just about a baby. This is not just a birthday. This is the coming of the divine word into a historical context concretely, incarnate, in the flesh. And of course, what it's reminding us is that as we commemorate and celebrate a historical event, we're being reminded on the level of the spirit of our faith that grace is also realized incarnationally within us in each generation. Obviously not the word coming to us in the sense of the incarnation, but grace is given to us in each generation and our task is how we realize that grace. And the word realize, we use the word real all the time. It is an adjective taken directly out of Latin, realis. Realis is an adjective which is the basis is the Latin word res, R-E-S, res. And all it means is a thing. So when we use the adjective word realis, real, it means it's thingish, it's thingy. 
So we use it all the time because we have limited vocabularies in the 21st century. So what we can do is just throw in more or less the same four words we know, which is like, like, um, and real. And when it's very important, we say really. And sometimes, really, really. So it's thingishly, thingishly true. The way we speak is obviously, it needs a bit of work. But the, when we say to realize grace, then now you understand. When I say the realization of grace in our life is to make it a thing, to make it a reality. Now you understand the word reality. Realitas, again, it's just a Latin word. It means the quality of being thingish. Reality, that's all. We aspect that we understand these are all thingishly. Okay, good. So you see why we chose to pick a Latin word, because it sounds a little more elegant than going thingish. So the incarnational aspect of Genealogy Sunday, the reason, that's the very beginning of the Gospel of St. Matthew, is to remind us that the word appears in a historical context within a family. And grace becomes real within this individual life, not in someone else's, but in the life to those of us who have been called. And so the question becomes is how do I personally realize that task? That is part of our examination and our preparation for Christmas. If you've been doing the Maronite Novena, which you can find online, the sisters put up the, um, the Maronite Novena for Christmas, uh, so just Google it as they say. That aspect in which the, the prayers which are there, we talk about presenting our hearts, bringing our minds to Christ. St. Paul gives us that in his letter when he talks about that his slave ship, he says servant, we translate in English, but the word in Greek really means I am a slave of Christ. I am completely bound to him for his service, for his work, and the fruits of my labor are his. That is a very concrete understanding of apostleship. And St. Paul says that this is done for the obedience for the faith, meaning the ability to hear that voice and that light and the grace which is given to us. So that what we're doing during these last days is really understanding to stop and to consider the fact that grace, the genealogy is a reminder that what is commemorated historically in the Messiah and as we say in the Maronite within the Fenkitho on the Feast of Our Lady, that the word is written in the flesh of Mary so that the word incarnate is born in Bethlehem, enters into this world. So that in this generation, in 2020, that in this year, in each day of our lives, the importance of our daily prayers, that grace is being offered to us, or at least to those who have ears to hear. That's always the key. So that when we don't pray on a daily basis, we're actually losing out on the communication that God is trying to speak to us. And I say, why are the prayers necessary? Because it's a moment when we stop and seriously listen to what God is saying to us. If I'm just washing dishes and cleaning the car and going to work and going shopping, yes, God can speak to me. But you try any kind of a conversation when you're walking through the local iron plant, trying to work and simultaneously carry on a conversation, it's not very easy. So the same way that it happens for us, unless we take those moments of a pause, morning, night, or in the tradition of the Angelus, morning, midday, and the evening, to stop for a few moments to hear then of course we lose that communication, we lose that grace, and of course we cannot then realize grace within our lives in historical context because we've broken that connection because we've not heard that reality. So here it's the question of also being historical, not of a past event, of the history that you and I are creating right now that what grace is meant to be realizing within this world now, the presence of Christ, no less. It's no less the presence of Christ, which is why in the divine mysteries and the Eucharist specifically, but in all of the mysteries is clearly that personal presence of the word. 
But even in our prayers, it is still the Word who speaks to us. We obviously don't realize it in our lives the same way that it does in the divine mysteries and the sacraments, but it's no less real. And so we have to have that life of prayer which is necessary because within our own lives, each one of us is unique. There will never be another you individually, either before you or until the day of judgment. You exist in a very specific and unique moment of a reflection of God's act of creation and ultimately his eternal love. But there is more to your story than just simply you exist. Your story is meant to be transfigured and then transcendent into the bosom of the divinity, as we say. And that historical reality only you individually can realize. And you only get one shot at it. And if you miss it, of course, that moment that is meant to have reflected the eternal word and the eternal divine love will be gone forever. And then what we call the judgment. It will be just measured out of what we were supposed to have done and what we actually did do. Not what we thought we wanted to do or what we actually did or whatever just happened in our lives. That's not judgment. Judgment is the measurement of what God had intended us and desired for us to do and then what we actually did do. And unless we are actually making an effort to hear the voice of God to be brought further into the light, we are almost guaranteed that the gap between what God desires of us and what we actually do do is going to be pretty big. And when it's definitively big, well, that's the definition of hell. That's separation from the entire plan of God in that sense. But the more that we listen, the more that we move further into that light. Now, some of you may have already come across. Someone just sent me a Christmas letter the other day. And at the top, they put one of these little quotations for the beginning of their letter. It's a quotation from St. Augustine, so maybe some of you have it. Apparently, I went to go look online to see, well, what else was going on with this? This is a good Catholic family that put it, so the quotation is from St. Augustine. But the quotation is from a sermon of St. Augustine's. That's not on, I guess apparently people have done screensavers and memes with this too. Good memes, not stupid ones in which it says, bad times, hard times. This is what people keep saying. But let us live well, and time shall be good. Okay, so this is what's being lifted from St. Augustine. And so they put it at the heading of their Christmas letter. They've got like five little kids running around while they're building a house and holding down a job and homeschooling at least partially because, of course, everything's closed. So they thought this was a very good quotation. It's not done, but that's the beginning of it where it just simply says, bad times, hard times. This is what people keep saying. Oh, this is awful. Oh, this is horrible. Oh, we never, no one's ever lived like this before. Get real, grow up, shake the dirt off, and let's move forward. I was just reading about the biography of blessed Michael McGivney, who is the founder of the Knights of Columbus. He died in a pandemic at the end of the 19th century under what they were calling the Russian flu or the Asian flu. And then, of course, 30 years later, you had the Spanish flu, and 50 to 100 million people died during that. So we just happen to have a quiet period of 50 years of being ridiculously silly, of a peaceful period of time in the modern world. And we thought that's the way the world's supposed to be. Pandemics always come. They are regular. There was even a pandemic called the parrot flu in the 1920s, but they're not, telling, they're not talking about that in the news normally. Well, they do sufficiently enough for me to be aware of it, but that one was from South America. And there you had, that went on for three years and had tens of thousands of people die from it, following the Spanish flu with millions who died. So, we're kind of fragile in many ways. So this quotation then he says, he says, but let us live well and time shall be good. And this is the key to the quotation. He then says, we are the times. We are the generation. We are this historical moment. 
So we are the times, and such as are we, such then are the times. So if we are noble and honorable and transcendent in our vision, pursuing goodness and beauty and peace, then the times will be honorable and noble and beautiful and at peace, no matter what is happening. Calvary is the most beautiful moment in the history of the human race. Doesn't mean it was the nicest feeling-wise, but there was nothing more honorable, nothing more noble, nothing more glorious, nothing more loving than Good Friday. The times become what we make them, and that quotation was perfect. It's from Sermon 30. It's a commentary of St. Augustine on chapter 17 of the Gospel of St. Matthew. It is a reminder that grace is there to make the times be transformed, not just in a historical moment in Bethlehem, but today, in December 2020, regardless of what we think may be difficult, grace is there to make us transcendent and to take us towards a more profound beauty and even, in a sense, for many of us, a more profound peace. So that when grace is made a thing, when it is realized within our lives, we become that historical reality that God desires us to be. This is why the Gospel of St. Matthew begins by this long list, is to remind us that God works only in time, as far as human beings are concerned. And it's in time where grace becomes that transcendent aspect. So when we become that reality, then we can understand why St. Paul says, and we can finish with this one quotation, towards the ending, towards the, almost towards the very end of the quotation being read today at the beginning of the letter to the Romans. St. Paul says, now that he hasn't met the Romans yet. It's important to understand, this letter is about going to meet people that he hasn't met. And he writes them and he says, I give thanks to my God. I am grateful to God through Christ Jesus, our Lord, for all of you. And why is he grateful for this, for these people he's never met? He doesn't know them. He says, I am grateful because your faith has been spoken of throughout the world. I haven't been to Rome yet, but I have heard about the faith of you at the parish of Rome, and that makes me profoundly grateful. That is a very beautiful line written by St. Paul, and clearly very sincere. And so may your living reality, that you are the times of God's grace of goodness and beauty and healing, that that faith become a redounding sound from central Maine so that everyone will know of the faith of those Catholics who live not in a bad time, but in a time which is always good because every time and every moment is a moment of grace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten from God, transcendental from the Father. Through him all things are made, for us and us, and for our salvation, the kingdom of heaven. And the Holy Spirit was in time to the Virgin Mary and the King of Mary. For our sake, he was crucified by the conscious body. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the truth. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the door and the Lord of God, the Holy Spirit of the Holy Cross. We believe in the one world of God and of the Son. Itelvot madeb heda loho, walvot aloho dam hade tayut. When you see what I got out, kill the bite of the scud, hide Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered, for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today 
in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. Peter, Chief of the Apostles, on page 774. 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and Lord of security, make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, with love and faith that are pleasing to God. blessings and assistance, for we are weak, and you are the support and refuge of all. We raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. <clears throat> o Lord, may the light of your face shine upon us, deliver us from every evil, and blot out all our transgressions that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. <clears throat> Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O maker of all creation. With the angels we glorify you and with voices of praise. We cry out and we proclaim.
You are holy, O God, the Father, and abundant in mercy. Because of your love for us, you sent your Son into the world, and he became flesh of the Virgin Mary for our salvation. He then commanded and instructed them, saying, Each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. coming that saved us, and as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you, on the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church employs you, and through you and with you, employs your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father. Have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. May 
those who share in these holy mysteries be cleansed, body and soul, from every sin and receive eternal life. Amen. O Lord, accept our intercessions and prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shadow Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church, so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked to pray for them, those who desired but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Maron, St. Ignatius of Antioch, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rests among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Pray for remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers, and sisters, <clears throat> teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Your 
O God the Father, you strengthen and you encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven. not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. <clears throat> Peace be with you. O oh Lord, bless your worshipers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins, for you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity, one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth, to Him be glory Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by the Lord of God, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you, for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
thank you, O Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your life-giving cross. Be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings. That we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. So we just want to make an announcement this week. So over the last months, we've been, the protocols you have in the bulletin. And then a couple months ago, then we, we highlighted the aspect about masks. And then three weeks ago, I underlined it. There's no need for any arguments over mask, no mask, whatever. There's only two things I want to give you to consider. One is just compassion for the other. There are a lot of people who are terrified of the virus, and many of them for very, very legitimate reasons. By wearing the mask, you see, I have ninja warriors all around me, that the aspect of it is primarily a courtesy. It's why, oh, well over a month ago, I started in bringing communion to you, always to wear uh, my surgical mask. So the first is just the question of the other, just the question of courtesy, respect towards them. The second one is a bit of a larger one in the sense that I would not like to have St. Joseph's be known as an anti-masking church. Please do not, by any kind of aspect, I would be horrified if we were ever linked by the Baptist in the southern part of Maine for one reason or another. And so, just two considerations for you. You can treat it like a restaurant, whatever, just as a consideration. And I thank you all for your devotion. It is lovely to see you week after week. And may God reward you and bring that thingishness of grace into your life fully realized day after day. So go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.